Good afternoon. Today is Monday, October 24th. Welcome to the weekly San Jose State football press conference with head coach Mike McIntyre. This week, San Jose State on the road at Louisiana Tech for a Saturday contest. That's this Saturday, October 29th. The game is uh, at 1 p.m. Pacific time, 3 p.m. local time in Reston, Louisiana, and it is available on the Spartan Radio Network. San Jose State coming in off of a bye, three and four on the season, two and one within the conference, and Louisiana Tech also three and four and two and one in the WAC. La Tech, however, coming in off of a win, 24 to 17 this past Saturday at Utah State. The game at Louisiana Tech this Saturday is Louisiana Tech's homecoming game. The uh, coaches show this week will be Wednesday, the 26th of October. We're recording from noon to one here in downtown San Jose over at Original Joe's, and it will air on 1590 KLIV from eight to 9 p.m. And a handful of uh, notes to pass along. Uh, there's a special ticket promotion for next week's home game against Idaho. That's Saturday, November 5th. Um, Ticketmaster.com is the place to go for uh, the ticket special. San Jose State has a page on Ticketmaster.com, and you, are, uh, you will be able to buy reserved seats for $28.27. You might wonder why uh, the $28.27 price. It's in recognition of the Spartans' October 14th win against Hawaii, which the final score was 28 to 27. So again, Ticketmaster.com, just go to the San Jose State page uh, for that ticket special. And also, uh, Duke Ianacho has been nominated for the Geico Play of the Year. Voting is open right now, and uh, this week only is your chance to vote for Duke. We encourage every, everyone to log on to uh, Facebook.com slash Best of College Football to place a vote for Duke's play. He uh, blocked a PAT against Hawaii on the homecoming game and then returned it for two crucial points in San Jose State's victory on homecoming night. Again, that's facebook.com slash best of college football. Right now, I'll bring in the head coach, Mike McIntyre. Uh, good to see everyone. This is. Uh, um, we've had a good bye week off, and our guys worked hard. We got back last night and had a good practice, and uh, they're off today, and then we'll start um, back again tomorrow um, and, and practice and get ready to go to Louisiana Tech. Uh, Louisiana Tech's a very good football team. Came off a big win at Utah State. Um, Lennon Greer, number five, um, is a very good player. Excellent running back. Um, ran all over us last year. We've got to find a way uh, to stop him. Um, they're kind of rotating quarterbacks right now with Nick Isham and Kobe Cameron. Kobe Cameron came in at the end and um, let them down to a score um, that they end up holding off and, and winning the football game. Uh, they're uh, very, very good. They have some uh, good, quick receivers, throw a lot of quick game, a lot of jailbreak screens, and uh, run the ball with Greer really well. Defensively, uh, there are two defensive ends, um, number 41, Ike, and number 91, Matt Broa are very, very good pass rushers. And we'll put a lot of pressure on our quarterback. And uh, Adrian Cole, I believe, made Defensive Player of the Week this week in the WAC. Um, he's an excellent player, a lot of speed on their defense. And uh, it, it, it'll be a tough test for us going down there on homecoming. Our guys are excited about going to play. Um, it'll be a, a fun game um, for us. So any questions anybody has, I'll take them at this time. Uh, Coach, uh, you mentioned that Louisiana Tech is, uh, is kind of fumbling between two quarterbacks. Can you talk about how that changes your defense at all? Yeah, it won't change it at all. They're very similar. Look, um, they, uh, they've they been playing a freshman. He's been doing a good job. They just made a change um, in the, in the fourth, right at the end of the third quarter, going to the fourth quarter. Um, their offense didn't change a lick. They kept doing the exact same things, and um, they completed a couple more passes. Um, but uh, mainly they're trying to get the ball to their receivers on quick game jailbreak screens, bubble screens, and handing the ball off to Greer um, is what they're trying to do. And throwing the ball to number four, he's a very good player, Quentin Patton. Oh, you already commented on, um, on Louis Antic's stout defense. They held uh, Utah State to a minimal amount of rushing yards. They came in sixth in the nation. Uh, can you talk about um, how that is going to affect your running game at all? Well, yeah, they played well against the run um, and, and did some good things there. I think like they're a good football team. We'll keep doing the same things we've done, and hopefully, uh, you know, we're running the ball better. Rutley, uh, another two weeks to get well, well, and I think that'll be a big factor for us. And the other running backs have been running um, good, so uh, I think just a combination of what we can do. If we'll just hold on to the football, I think we'll be in good shape. 
Mike, you have said in the past that you either get better or you get worse. You don't stay the same. You had a bye week. Do you think you got better? Or, and and well, what's yeah, your sort of philosophy on yeah, bye weeks? We, we worked really hard on the bye week. I, I gave them a couple of days off after the game because we played on Friday night. and We came back, worked hard Monday through Thursday, and then we came back last night and worked. And uh, our guys worked hard. We were in pads um, every day. And uh, we were in pads last night. So uh, we're trying to get more physical and, and get better at the, at the little things that we need to improve on. So I felt like we did get better last week, and I think we'll got to get the speed of the game going again. Um, that's a little bit what you worry about being off a little bit when you get cranking back up. Um, but I think we'll be in good shape there. Do you start looking at the opponent earlier than you would if you had a normal schedule. Is that right? Uh, yeah, we do because you have a couple more <clears throat> days. We work the first few days on things that Navy does offensively because that's hard to prepare for their offense. Um, and then the Wednesday and Thursday we worked on things that Louisiana Tech does, and then last night we worked on Louisiana Tech. So you get about four more days that you usually wouldn't have uh, to work on the different things that you need to be prepared for. And can you talk about sort of the attitude of your guys last night coming back from a few days off, and do they seem to be ready to work again? Yeah, they were ready to work. They were excited. Um, I thought they bounced around well out there and were motivated what was going on. I felt like they're um, fresh and, and ready to go. So I, I felt very good about that last night. Uh, going away from the coming games, back, um, Chandler Jones recognized the uh, Paul Arnung Award. Uh, what's your thoughts on that? Well, Chandler is a phenomenal player. He, that, the Paul Arnung Award is ability to make plays different ways. You know, he made three touchdowns three different ways. And so uh, he's very versatile. Uh, you know, I, I call him, a, you know, he's just a, a tenacious warrior. You know, he's a great, fierce competitor is what he does. And he, he really works hard and excited about Chandler and what he has to do. Um, on Saturday, Louisiana Tech ran a trick play for, four, for 45 yards. Uh, yeah. Are you guys preparing for any of those sort of Casey, things? Casey um, made a great throw. Um, they'll run a, they run a reverse every game. Um, they do a, um, a lot of bubble screens and stuff with the running back. The receivers kind of catch the ball behind the line of scrimmage, which gives you the ability to double throw it. Um, and they'll also fake that, and run the guys on vertical. So those are things we'll definitely have to work on. Um, they're a very good perimeter football team. Um, you know, they look like they're in a pass mode all the time, but they'll hand the ball off quite a bit um, to the running back, kind of spread you out. So we've got to be ready for all those scenarios. Coach, this week uh, Duke's play from the Hawaii game was nominated for a Geico Play of the Year. <clears throat> and your thoughts on uh, how big that play was and, and sort of the memory that can carry out through the oh, season? Yeah, it was a um, gigantic play in the game. You know, we had been moving the ball and doing things and kept shooting ourselves in the foot and, they, and old, mo, old momentum kind of turned, the old mo turned and uh, when Travis Johnson came through and blocked the field goal, Coach Dahl did a good job of working on that during the week. We saw a, um, a, a ability to be able to squeeze a lineman through and, and Travis did that and worked at it hard, um, blocked it and then Duke is the, is the scoop guy. He scooped it and took off running. Um, when I saw him, I said, oh no, he's going to pull his hamstring and then I saw him, I knew when he kicked it in gear and took off, um, to me, that was the, the game-changing play. Mm -hmm. I know there was a lot of other plays, but that gave us a lot of momentum, gave us an opportunity to win it with one score, and uh, that was a big deal for us. Yeah. Really big. On the defense, to talk a little bit maybe about the, the play of 2K and uh, what he's meant to that, to that front seven. Uh, and 2K is a uh, tenacious little guy. Um, he's um, given us a lot of speed on the, on the edge at linebacker, um, ability to cover a little bit. And um, he's a ferocious hitter. So uh, I think he brings a lot to the table there and um, plays with a lot of energy, a little Tasmanian devil, so to speak. And uh, he plays with a lot of energy. Mike, uh, the guys who were getting healthy last week, uh, did, when did Duke start? When did he get back on the field for you? Um, last night. Just last night? Yeah. OK, but Fred was practicing last week? Fred practiced um, sparingly last week. He would go a, uh, you know, a, a, a 10 minute period, kind of rest, and then go another 10 minute period. Um, but last night he was able to go most of the night. And th those two and Vargas definitely will be ready to start? Yes. If they barring a going, setback. If they, um, yeah, foreseeing right. no future setbacks. And right. so you're always concerned about when they go hard the next day. They were all feeling good today, so hopefully they'll be ready to go tomorrow. Yeah. You know, I, I'm interested in how coaches and players think about this stuff. You know, from the outside, we'll look at your schedule and say, you need three more wins to become bowl eligible. Right. You've got only two home games, which means the math says you got to win one road game. 
do, do you look at it that way? or do you, I mean, I know there's all that one of the time stuff, but do you say we got to get this Louisiana Tech game because that's going to pave the way for us to become bowl eligible, or how do you approach that? No, we, we truly, you know, I know it's a cliche, but it's the truth. I, I look at every game, and you've heard me say it, I look at every single game as a season within itself. Whatever you have to do to win that game, whatever it is. And um, so that's how we look at this football game. And every kid on our team, I tell them every week, and they understand it, they all have a role. Well, this week's role might not be as big as next week's role. They might do something totally different on offense or defense. People get injured, you got to step in. So this week's role that each player has is critical for us to win this football game. And I think with our football team, we, there's no way we can look past anybody, look to anything. Um, we just have to take it one play at a time, one game at a time. And um, that's what we're doing for this week. And we don't look ahead. Of, of course, people are telling the kids, if you win this, if you win that, well, which three are we going to win, which two are we going to lose? You, you, you can't do that. And so um, we need to make sure we, we would like to win all of them and be able to play on Thanksgiving weekend, hopefully for the WAC championship in a way. That's our goal. Um, but we've got to start with this one first and go there. And there, and I know Louisiana Tech's thinking the same exact way. Um, and uh, they, it's a big game for them. And you know, they whipped up on us last year. So um, they probably think they already got the W, so to speak. So hopefully we'll go down there and take care of business. Well, I sort of thought that's what you'd say. But let me ask you a different way. At the, before the season, when you looked at the schedule and you saw that you were playing three of your last four conference games on the road. Does mm -hmm. that seem like a daunting way to finish up, or were you happy that you had some chances to kind of get a head of steam going right. well, and get some confidence? At, when I looked at the schedule, I couldn't get past Andrew Luck and Stanford, to be honest with you, <laughs> and they've kind of proved that. Um, and uh, so, um, but you know, you kind of you do look at the schedule and go, you wish you had more home games. I think anybody would have, anybody would say that. Everybody on our campus would say that because. Number one, it's more tickets, it's more revenue. But with only five home games, yeah, the home games are critical. You know, we barely let one get away that we should have got, and we should be 3-0 and at home. And our goal is, you see our, our schedule's all up. It, uh, we don't have a away schedule, and we have home schedule. It's critical to win at home. And so um, definitely going on the road, we've got to make up for one that we lost on the road. So somewhere we got, if you look at it that way, somewhere we got to get one of these on the road to make up for that one. And then, because we're already up, so to speak, on the road. But um, we're looking at these conference games here as we roll along as really big for us. And uh, every conference game is huge. Coach, uh, which matchup is causing most concern, be it uh, the uh, which, which uh, matchup is causing most concern? Is it your running game versus uh, Louisiana Tech's uh, run defense or your offense versus, uh, or um, I'm sorry, well, Louisiana Tech's the, passing game? The biggest matchup, if you watch the game last year, is the stop number five. He ran all around us, through us, by us. Uh, he did anything he wanted to. And I'm pretty sure he's sitting in his dorm room today, can't wait till we show up. And uh, so uh, we've got to be able to stop number five. And uh, and then uh, also stop number four. He's really good. Patton does a lot of big plays for him. Um, very good football player. Um, and then defensively, uh, to me, their two pass rushers um, can create havoc and cause turnovers, 41 and 91. Mike, number five, Lennon Career, the running back, had 252 yards. I know you know that. Um, what does he do? What, what makes him effective? He's big. He's fast. He runs by you. He runs around you. has a great stiff arm. And um, he, uh, that's something we have to be ready for. He has a stiff arm and a, and a, and a loose hip. And uh, reminds me, I've gone blank on the guy's name. Who's a great running back? Oh, Sean Alexander, who played at the Seattle Seahawks, who played at Alabama. Remember how Sean would kind of, you go, they got him. And he kind of just scoot away, scoot away, scoot away with that stiff arm, that slip. That's what Greer does all the time. And uh, that's something we've been working on and trying to simulate in practice. And our scout guys have been trying to simulate it. And uh, to me, he, he, and he has speed. When he gets to the outside, he can roll for a big guy. And, uh, I think he's just a very good football player. He has not piled up big yardage in any games recently. I think he had one real good game early. Right. What well, are teams doing? A lot of big yardage until he played us last year. <laughs> and then he piled up against us. And then the next week he had a big game. And he kind of got rolling at the end of the year. Um, so we've got to keep him from getting going. All right. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it.
Okay, thanks again everyone for uh, coming out and thanks to our viewers online. Again, if uh, you can get onto facebook.com slash best of college football, you can vote for Dukey and Acho's big play against Hawaii uh, in which he blocked an extra point and returned it for two points. Also, ticketmaster.com, visit the San Jose State page for the uh, ticket special going on for the upcoming home game against Idaho on November 5th. Thanks again everyone.